everybody. It's me, Kai Mann. And I want to um, talk to you guys today a little bit. Please excuse me. I just came from the gym. And um, I want to talk to you a little bit about, I guess, forgiveness um, is what I want to talk a little bit about. I was on the treadmill and I was watching the latest um, Red Table Talk with Jada um, and her daughter, her mother as well, and her brother um, from another mother. I was watching this episode and they were talking about their father and how their father wasn't there for them. Um, and it made me think a whole host of, of things um, came up for me. One, um, what came up for me was uh, my own father. Um, and and I'll, I'll just say this as well as talking about forgiveness, but also talking about a little bit about detachment. And so um, I'm going to talk about those two things for the reason being of, I believe that once I forgave my father, that I kind of detached, not just from the situation at hand, but also, you know, from him. Um, and it wasn't that I was, you know, I sought out to do that, but just as um, many, many people have not grown up with their fathers and their lives and how that, you know, some people carry a lot of pain from it. And I know I have a little sister um, who has really been the anchor to my family as far as on my father's side. Um, she's always been the, like I said, the anchor and she keeps all of the siblings, you know, she knows all about where each one of us are. She knows who we are. She loves us. And she is that connection for each one of us um, with regards to my father. Somewhere along the line, my father um, left my family when I was probably about two years old. So from the age of two until about, I don't know, 23, I think, is when I first like saw my father for the first time for what 20 had been 20, over 21 years. And I never really considered myself to, you know, to hold any grudges. I know people think Scorpios, whatever, we hold grudges, but I never held a grudge um, to my father. I never believed that I did. Um, but we kind of got into like this little tift on the way back from my, my grandfather, which is his stepfather's funeral. And it was only because I was tired as heck and I had been driving from Florida all the way to Pennsylvania. And now we were leaving Pennsylvania after my grandfather's funeral. And my father, for some reason, didn't want to drive. I wasn't sure why. He didn't say why. He just said he didn't want to drive. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I've just been driving this van you know, this whole entire, you know, three days, two or three days that we've been there, I've driven it from Florida all the way up to Pennsylvania. Please just, you know, drive from this point on or I'm not going to be able to, you know, like to rest or whatever. I mean, to drive. And so at that particular point, something just clicked in me and I just went completely to the left. Um, my, my younger brother at the time was in the van. He was about 17 years old. He was sitting at the in the back seat and he was laughing. I didn't even hear him, but he was underneath the seat. He was laughing in a sense. But he told me later a lot of the things that I had said were things that he had wanted to say to my father. And I just I just went off. Like I really, I guess everything that I had ever maybe felt that did not allow myself to feel those feelings so that I can, you know, continue to move on and do my day. And here's where detachment for me comes in. I'm, I'm always able to detach away from feelings that are not, um, not that, that kind of hold you back or kind of keep you stuck in one particular area. And so I'm able, I've always been all of my life. And I don't know if it was because such at a young age, at the age of two, that, you know, I got that detachment from my father and it kind of, you know, led the, the story for the rest of my life, maybe, or maybe does have something to do with, you know, who the makeup and character of who I am. And that, that experience had nothing to do with it. It was just maybe a test or, or something that an experience that, you know, allowed me to at least know who it is that I, you know, who it is that I am and where it is that I've come from. Um, 
But when I was watching the Red Table talk and to hear them talk about forgiveness, and now their father was on drugs. And, and so there was a lot of different um, reasons as to why, you know, he could not be in their lives. Of course, he, you know, on drugs. We think, I think about this a lot only because I too, in some instance, had to leave my children with their father. It wasn't that I never saw them ever again, you know, holidays and um, summers and things like that. We spent time together always, but um, the same could be said of me. Like, how could you, you know, leave your kids with their father? Well, the one thing that is is important that a lot of people don't realize is that we hold parents, we hold people to such an extreme and we expect them to do, you know, a certain certain thing. We expect them to be mothers and whatever the mothering looks like that you believe it looks like you hold them to that that particular position. Well, not everyone um, mothers in the way that you do. Not every mother um, is supposed to be there 24 seven, you know, um, at arm's length. Um, certain, diff certain things happen. And so I believe that when I thought about this, the same, maybe the same underlying, um, feelings that I had for my dad and him maybe leaving and not really acknowledging those feelings or not really, I just thought, well, you know, I forgive him for, you know, whatever, let's move on. Um, and that was the case. But in the instant of, and I was 23 years old, and that was like almost 26 years, you know, ago, 26, 27 years ago, because I'm much older now. But as I look at those particular situations, I realized that, you know, even at that time where I thought that I was not carrying or harboring anything that I, I must have, you know, even though I didn't talk about it, even though, you know, I wasn't displaying any, um, what I could see was any um, feelings or emotions or actions or behaviors because of it. I was married and, and I had a really good husband. We just did not click for many different reasons. Um, but in that instance, you know, I had three sons. So I wanted my sons to be raised by their father. And he and I were great friends. So we could still, you know, have those interactions where we could, you know, come together and for the sake of our children. And so when I think about, you know, forgiveness, what does it really look like? You know, um, we talked, they talked about forgiveness and they talked about how um, maturity had to be involved. And I think that is so true. I think that is above and beyond the most, you know, truest statement that they could have said, because you have to be mature enough in order to forgive someone. Now, at this particular moment, I'm, you know, 50 years old and I'm looking at the situation with my father. I don't really have a connection with him. And in my mind, I've been thinking, you know, of ways that I could, you know, connect with him, of course, call him. <laughs> and every time I think to call him, I haven't been able to. It's either like in the middle of the night or it's like way early in the morning, too early to be calling people. Um, and so... I think about you have to really make that effort. You have to make that effort because there will be one day that either you won't be here or he won't be here. And so you still have to make that connection within the two. Um, I don't hold anything because he was a man. I never asked him, well, why weren't you there? Because um, it really, to me, is in this the grand scope of things really isn't, isn't important. Him um, being with my mother and bringing me into life was important. Um, I had to be here for whatever reason. And we never really look at those things. And, and Jada and her brother, when they were talking about that, this is how I felt for a long time. I've never called my father like, and I won't say never, I might have um, called him my sperm donor. But I believe, you know, as a, as a higher evolved person, I believe that people's purposes are to eat, to bring us into life or to carry us to a certain extent. And maybe his extent was not to be in my life for all of these, this, all of these many years. And I know a lot of people will look at this and say, well, that's not true. He was your father. He should have been there. Well, no, um, actually it might have turned out better or best that he was not in my life, to be honest with you. 
Um, I don't know how he lived. I don't know how any of, you know, like my little sister really lived with him. Um, I know certain things that have happened, you know, within that, that particular, that particular, um, dynamics that I'm glad that I didn't have to, to live through. So when I, when I think about certain things, I'm like, you know, I, I'm not phased or bothered by that. I'm glad that I've got the siblings that I have, the ones that I do know, um, they're very special to me and I love them. We don't talk as often, um, as we should, you know, but a lot of families don't. Now on my mother's side of family, it's a total, totally different thing. I still don't talk to them as much, but I do, um, we do, I do have a more, um, a closer knit family on that particular side. But when I was watching the show, it really made me think about how people are always expecting other people to be whatever it is that they believe that they need that person to be. And when you do have those expect expectations, those are the, the things that don't allow you to love and to um, understand and to, you know, have empathy for, because those particular people who we're trying to force them to be whatever it is that we want them to be, have another agenda for their life. They have another purpose for their life. They have another path for their life, whatever that may be. And they have to live that out. And we can't, you know, try and pigeonhole them into what it is that we believe that they should be for us. And it's not to say that I don't believe that parents should be there for their children. Yes, you should be there for your children in whatever capacity that you should be there or can be there for them or however the dynamics is. In my particular case, as far as with my father and my mother, I don't know. My mother's deceased and, you know, she's been, um, she's had Alzheimer's since I was about 19 years old. So we never got into that space of where we could actually sit down and really talk about why um, things happened the way that they, they did. I do have the opportunity now to actually speak with my father about those things, but I really don't want to. I really don't care to really, unless he wants to share those things with me, that's fine. That's It's part of his life. But I don't have that need to know why things did not work out. That, that doesn't, it doesn't change anything for me. Like my life and my purpose are here for a particular reason. And yeah, yeah, it would be cool. Okay, yeah, if you want to sit down and you want to talk to me about, you know, what happened, I'm here, I'm all ears. But it doesn't, if he never mentions it, it's not going to make me feel one way or the other. I just want to understand and, and learn him as a person and know who he is today and what makes him tick and, you know, and yeah, maybe, you know, if he wants to share some things about his past so that that gives me some, you know, some um, idea of, you know, why he became this man that he became or why he's, you know, thinks the way that he thinks or whatever the case may be, then that's fine. But I'm not one to be saying, you need to tell me why you wasn't there. I mean, for some people that may work for them, they may need that, but I, I honestly don't need that. Um, and when I wanted to talk about detachment, um, Detachment can be a good thing and it just depends. Um, there's always, you know, different poles or, or degrees of detachment. And let's say for me, detachment has worked on a lot of things. But one thing I did realize is that when I detach, sometimes I detach myself from the whole person or from the whole the whole situation. And sometimes, and I just, and I just got this like a couple days ago because I detached from a business sense, a business, um, venture that I was working on. Um, and I decided to no longer to work with, you know, someone. And, and I realized that when I, when I've gotten to that space in business where I feel like, you know, the person that I'm working with, um, like we're really not a match or we're not a fit, you know, then I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll end, I'll end that relationship. But I realized too, that in that, when I end that business relationship, that I also end that relationship with that person. And that's not always good, you know, and I don't mean that I'm like, you know, going off on them and saying, you know, or just not, you know, acknowledging them as a person, but I, I, I pretty much, um, cut all ties 
And I've done that with a couple people that I've worked with. I've just kind of cut all ties. Um, and I thought, well, you just, you before, before this, before this particular business venture with that person, um, or even not even before then, at some point you, you guys were having maybe a, you were gaining a friendship or gaining some type of relationship outside of the business piece of it. Why cut that part off, you know? And so I really thought about that and I didn't, and I didn't really think about that until the, the person that I was just, you know, kind of in a conversation with. And I said, well, I don't, you know, I don't really think that this is going to work. So you know, why don't we just, you know, make this the last day or make this the last um, month or whatever the case may be. And so that person said to me, like, I really love you and I really care about you. And this is not going to be the it. I'm not going to just let you just kind of walk out of my life. And I don't, and it, it just hit me like, oh, okay, cool. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay, cool. You know, not to say again that when I detach from people that if I don't see you out in the street or whatever, that I don't speak or anything like that. It's never that. Um, I just kind of move, keep moving forward, keep moving forward, keep moving forward. And it's no, it's no disrespect to anybody. That's just kind of how my mind works. And that's kind of how my mind worked after my father and I, after I kind of went to the left off on him, um, maybe some years later, I kind of apologized for it. Um, but I kept moving forward and that's how I've always done my life. And I think now it's, you know, a different time for me to, to realize and do something different. So I know I just said a lot and it probably seemed like I was all over the way, all over the place. And I probably was because I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about this and I'm kind of figuring some things out at the same time, as well as there are some things that I really know and, and really understand, which is, you know, who it is that I am and how, how I've, um, operated in the past and realizing that I don't have to operate in that same, you know, way anymore. Anyway, peace out deuces. Thank you for listening to my ramblings. Um, have a great day. Hopefully I didn't do anything to deter it. Peace. Yeah. Oh,